Uh, I did a little bit of trimming. A uh, particular area I did this trimming in was right around here. This edge right here. And then I trimmed those edges there because I forgot to do that in the video earlier. I was just trying to make it as quick as possible. And I realized that uh, cutting in real time sometimes, even though you're excited and it seems like it's uh, quick, it's you know still five minutes. So I realized a lot of you probably fast forwarded through some of that. I was talking, giving some tips throughout that. So if you want to hear those, go back and listen to it again. Um, I thought this was cool though. I measured this so tightly. Um, you see there's about a millimeter of play on one side, you know, maybe a little bit more on the other, but when I trimmed out the corners and uh, trimmed out that part down there, even though there were some parts where there was a little bit more uh, play because I kind of guesstimated on the uh, arc that it actually fits tight enough that I didn't even have to like glue it in place or anything like that to uh, be able to show it to you. So I thought that was super cool. Um, I'm just gonna turn this around here for you real quick. And this is the whole insides there. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm making this uh, able to be maintained. Um, reason what I planned on doing is this upper housing here would actually be uh, adhered in all the way around in fiberglass. That way there's no degradation of the uh, base's strength because it would then be uh, fiberglass over. Okay, and it actually should be a little bit stronger because this is not a flat piece. This has multiple curves to it. Uh, you'll notice this is clear here. Um, I was going to keep it that way. And there's, I'm sorry, using your middle finger. There's a reason why I'm going to keep this uh, center clear. All right, a um, couple reasons, and I might actually even make it a little bit bigger. Uh, I have there's an eight inch, and as well, I believe a ten inch, um, germicidal UV lamp. It's kind of like a cold cathode tube, but it's specifically in the um, lower nanometer range. I, I can't remember exactly what that is. I believe it's about 240 to 360, somewhere around there. It's a super light purple in color, but because this pretty much hugs the carpet, all right, it goes right down to it. And I could actually put a brush or just, you know, felt, you know, whatever I want to do. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it would also be germicidal as well. It uses very little power, but any area that runs over, that it only takes a couple of seconds for it to, uh, on contact, to kill bacteria. Here in the United States, if you're not from here, DJ or everybody else, um, these are actually required in each room, uh, the cooking areas, um, the preparation areas, anywhere where there's going to be a register, things like that. These things are actually... Uh, mounted to the walls and faced upward towards the ceiling. Um, that way air passing over them is sanitized. They're also used in hospitals too as well. So I figured, you know, I got a little machine running around to clean things. I might as well also be uh, disinfecting as well without having to use any kind of liquid chemical to do that. Um, completely renewable, doesn't leave any residues, those kinds of things. I was thinking about doing a, a waxing mechanism of some kind. Probably, I may, I may not, I'm not sure. Uh, I was thinking about in this area right here. Um, maybe right there, maybe here, and here. Having a little spray nozzle where at any point in time a small solenoid can open up and just squirt uh, a cleaning solution of choice. It could be um, a carpet deodorizer, it could be a solution that's called ChemDry um, here in the United States, but basically it is a um, carbonated water solution with sodium, you know, a little bit of salt in it. And believe it or not, it actually works really, really well at not only not saturating the carpet with um, a lot of water, it takes very little, but because it's carbonated and it has sodium in it, it uh, reverses stains adhesion to carpet and also wicks it. It actually brings it up to the edge of the tip of the surface where it can um, be sucked up by the agitating brush bar inside of the vacuum. A little bit of information a lot of people didn't know. Um, there is a specific reason why it's mounted the way it is, uh, because of the brush rotation. Um, you want to go against the grain, and it actually cleans uh, about twice as good uh, against the brush rotation. So that's why I mounted it in that direction. You'll notice the apparatus that was here was is gone. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see up there. Hopefully you can. And there is a little opening right here. Okay. Um, 
What I've noticed is as you go down the track for the vacuum, it actually gets a little bit smaller. I think that's to keep velocity going for the air heat suction up. Um, I am raising the voltage on the motor up to uh, 12 volts and some change, where originally at maximum it was running at 11. So I should make up range differences in tube length. That way it's not going to be that long, maybe about, I don't know, 16 inches, 18 inches, something like that. Basically it just has to make it through here to the front, go up into the next section and then back over. So whatever that length is approximately is all I'm going to have to worry about. But uh, we, with this being epoxyed in, the great news is, is that if anything breaks or I need to clean it, if I just flip the robot over, then I have screws that I can just undo these screws. The, uh, this is also where the wheels go. If I pop those wheels out, there's screws up under it. So I can get to all those. I can clean the brush bar, the things like that. And this whole panel can come off. This is a secondary panel. It's in two halves. You see it's purple here, it's gray there. Um, that's just how I did it. It's going to work really well for me. It kind of color coordinates a little bit with the other gray parts and stuff. So um, that worked well. So I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this video too as well. I'm uploading another one right now. And uh, my next video, I will be epoxying this thing in place. Um, only thing I got to do right now is um, I have, I'm using a little bit of super, not super glue, but uh, hot glue. I'm using a little bit of hot glue to hold the axles in place to make sure that these wheels are in the places they're supposed to be. I will have to go ahead and adhere the uh, treads back to the wheels because I need to make sure that when I um, actually mold this back in place, that it sits perfectly level with the existing wheels. That ensures that not only the robot doesn't ride um, uh, tilted backwards or forwards, but also that um, I have the correct angle on the brush so it's actually getting carpet. If I don't, the brush will actually either be tilted and it won't be touching the carpet, um, or vice versa. It could be tilted the opposite direction and, and it's not doing anything at that point. And it would also cause the whole robot to be off balance, and, and I don't want to do that. So what i got to do is, is lay this down like this. Yeah, like that. <laughs> it falls out. Anyway, lay it down and then uh, get it perfectly level. Go ahead and remove this real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, just like this. Okay. So basically, all I got to do is put it on a, a surface I know was 100% flat. And when I adhere it in place, it needs to be sitting on top of its stock wheels so it's at the correct height and uh, is going to ensure a pretty good seal to the hardwood floor or the carpet. Um, this robot's probably not going to see outside very much, and even if it does, the wheels are hard, uh, hard rubber. It's not going to really do anything to them, as long as the brush isn't running. It's not going to do anything to it, I don't believe. Um, but I do have to add those treads on, because I think that's going to add about a quarter inch to height. And that's going to change where I have to glue this in place. So uh, it's going to leave, uh, leave off with this right here. This will probably be my last picture and hopefully uh, YouTube will grab a good picture uh, of this uh, just by holding it here for a second. YouTube's algorithm usually means it's got to be a clear picture and whatever shows most often. All right, well this was Josh Darns and thank you for uh, you know seeing the 2 a.m. edition of uh, Jarvis and you know vacuum modding. Have a great day guys.